Hello and welcome to today's lecture. So continuing from the previous lectures, today we will continue to our discussion on fatic and crack propagation. We will focus on two, two problems today. One will be on the fatic strength estimation and the other will be on the crack propagation part. So we have covered both these topics in our last class and we'll look at the application in today's class. So this is our first problem. I'll give you a couple of minutes to study the problem. I'll go through, through this problem along with you. So it says that there is a steel component which is uh, undergoing reverse cyclic loading. Okay. Uh, uh, so per day, it is undergoing 100 cycles. And in a period of time, uh, it will be sub subjected to 160 Newton per millimeter square load for 200 cycles, 140 Newton per millimeter square load for 200 cycles, and 100 nanometer, 100 Newton per millimeter square is applied for 600 cycles. So in this cyclic uh, application of load, it has been also mentioned that the fatic life of the material is for the first case is 10 to the power 4 cycles. Next is 10 to the power 5 cycles, and for the last case, it's 2 and 10 to the power 5 cycles. We need to estimate the life of the component, as in how many days this component will last. Okay. So I'll move to the concepts that we have learned in our last class. We'll just br brush up uh, very fast. So the first thing is the minor's law, which is a linear cumulative damage law. It says that if a, if a component fails, fails in n cycles of a, of a load S, then if we apply one cycle, then it will be fail. It will be one by n times of damage will be done to the a failure. Okay. In continuation of that, we say that if R different cycles are applied, like we define R different types of loader applied to the same component, which we can mark from J equal to one to R, then and, e, and in every case, we have nj cycles at which this fails. We were required the small nj we denote to give the total failure that is required. Okay, so we have uh, seen in last day that this is the expression how from which we can calculate the small nj. Moving ahead uh, from the question, we can uh, see that uh, these are the data that is given to us. So as we have seen, uh, we have three different types of loading. One was 160 Newton per millimeter square, one was 140 and the other was 200. So your R becomes three. Uh, in each case, your fatigue failures are 10 to the power four, another was 10 to the power five, and another was 10 to the power 200 to the power five. So these we can read and number of cycles per day was 100. So basically we need to calculate n, small n1, small n2, and small n3 from the minus. Now remember that uh, we just have one equation that is our summation of uh, small n1, small ni by capital ni is equal to one. Now we have three unknowns. Now what to do with this effect? Okay. Uh, something you must be aware that here in this particular problem, n1, n2, and n3 are not at all independent. So we have seen that in one sequence, we have one uh, of type R1, we have 200 cycles, for our type R2 loading, we have another 200 cycles. And for the R3 kind of loading, we have 600 cycles. So always this 1000 cycles are provided in one sequence. Okay. What we need to find is how many such sequences will lead to failure. So, so we consider that there will be P such sequences at which this will fail. So what will be our N1? Our N1 will be 200p, our N2 will be 200p, and our N3 will be 600p. So altogether, if we can find P, then we have solved our problem. So from N1, N2, and uh, N3, we have boiled down our problem to find just P. That is only one equation has to be solved. And that is what our minus law equation gives. Now we quickly move to the solution of this. The minus law equation we substitute we take out p com common from n1 n2 and n3 and we substitute the relevant values and we get this uh take a couple of minutes to solve this problem okay this mathematics i'm not i'll not go to the details of this Uh, you must be getting p equal to 40. Check whether you are getting that.
Okay. Now the once P is solved, we were supposed to find the number of days and not the number of sequence. So we need to convert our se sequence number to the number of days. So uh, we well, you remember we we mentioned in the last slide that thousand cycles are applied at one sequence. So when we have forty sequences, we have total forty thousand cycles. And the question also says that there are hundred cycles are provided in each day. So some simple division of forty thousand by hundred gives you four hundred days. So this was a simple demonstration of the how to find and the fatigue life of a component. Okay, we will next move to. Uh, uh, the similar kind of a problem, but we will apply uh, MATLAB coding to that because uh, other than pen and paper problems, we need to solve coding problems as well. So uh, to increase the level of complexity of bit, what has been asked in this uh, part B of this problem is that, so the, the 160 Newton per millimeter squ uh, square load is now applied at 100 cycles, at 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600 cycles separately. Now for all the six different cases, we need to find the number of days that the component will last in each six of these cases. Uh, while the rest of the problem remains the same as in your 200 Newton per millimeter square and 140 Newton per millimeter square load remains as of the previous problem. Okay. Uh, I'll switch to MATLAB from here. Okay. Uh, this load. Okay. Uh, so uh, I hope my MATLAB screen is visible to everyone. So uh, from the uh, from the question, we'll note down the given values that are given to us. So we had three sequences, uh, N1, N2, and N3, of which N1 is now a variable. It keeps on varying for the, from case A to case F, 100, 200 to 600. And while your other two cases of N2, 200, and 600 remains the same, your fatigue life remains the same as before in part K, what you have already used, and to the power 4, and to the power 5, and to the power 5. Cycles per day remains 100. So now we move to the calculation part. So what we do is that we create a matrix. We run a loop for all the first, all the six cases that we have to solve from running from 1 to length of N1, because length of N1 here is 6. That is the six different cases that you need to solve. Uh, we create the, uh, the uh, vector small ni, which, uh, which consists of the particular case of n1 along with n2 and n3. Now, why we do this similarly, we do for a capital n also. Why we do this is that the MATLAB has a very nice uh, way of finding some of the vectors. So, since if we remember from minus law that we need to take some of small capital, small ni by capital ni. So we can simply uh, uh, take the um, matrix division and which is very convenient to do in MATLAB. So you do, you use a dot slash operator that is you can directly divide the two matrices component wise. So like, like the first component of NI by first component of capital NI, second component of small NI by the second component of small NI this way. And you take us some of the, uh, this new matrix that is uh, formed. And that's how you solve for P. And once you solve for P, then you need to estimate the fatigue life in days. That's the way we, we did it. So we P into the total. So this sum of NI previously was 1,000. Now it will depend on, on the particular case of NI that you have here. OK, and then we divide by cycle number of cycles by the day. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick run to show you the, uh, what the results are coming. Uh, so for hundred, so we did the case of two hundred cycles in our part A of the problem, and it came out to be four hundred days. So similar to what we have here, uh, and then for hundred cycles, you have more. And so as you see, the num if you apply more side number of cycles of a particular loading, your number of days the product will sustain will be lesser, which is a very intuitive result that you get from here. Okay, so with this we come to the end of our first problem. We will now go back and see the next problem of fat, uh, crack propagation. Okay, I'll resume the slideshow. Okay, 
we were uh, in the problem 2a now the problem 2 will also have two parts the first part will solve a problem using our parent paper and that is part b will try to solve the similar kind of a problem using matlab codes uh, so for problem uh, 2 we have a semi infinite plate which has which has initially a edge crack of length 0.4 millimeter and it has been subjected to a cyclic repeated stress loading of uh, 180 newton per millimeter square the fracture toughness of the particular plate is given as 1800 per newton per millimeter to 3, 3 by 2 and the crack growth rate equation is also given 13 into the minus 15 into delta k to the power 4 okay so we need to find two things we need to find a crack length at failure and we need to find number of cycles to failure okay so crack length so this initial edge crack length will grow as we apply more load and we'll finally reach to a critical crack length at which the product will fail and we also need to find how many such cycles of loading are required to, to reach to that failure problem uh, so we will again brush up on the few pro concepts that we have learned previously uh, the first is that the crack growth is so related to the stress intensity factor and applied stress using this equation. This is uh, the familiar, you are familiar with this equation, uh, k equal to s pi a. So a here is the crack length. Alpha is a parameter that will depend on what kind of a plate it is, infinite, semi-infinite. And k is the stress intensity factor and s is the applied load. So for semi-infinite plate, if you remember from the previous uh, class, we have seen its alpha equal to 1.12 for infinite plate it was one uh, then we have so uh, as as time progresses your k will reach to a critical value of fracture toughness and your uh, your crack length will will uh, increase and uh, eventually reach the failure crack length which will be at a f which we consider here and this is what you are asked to find your kc is given your s, s is given and alpha is known to you so this is simple uh, the next part of the problem, the second part requires you to, to use this crack propagation equation. So your crack propagation equation was given uh, in this format where you had a C delta K to the power N. And we integrate this equation to find the number of cycles to failure. And uh, the integration equation was this as we have derived in the last class. Uh, from there, now we go back to the question and uh, note down the data that we have, we were given. So stress loading was 180 Newton per millimeter square. Fracture toughness was 1800. A uh, crack growth rate equation was this. So from this, if we, if we tally with our C delta K to the power N equation, we get our C is 13 to the power 15 minus 15 and our N is four. And our initial crack length was given as 0.4 millimeter. Now we, this is a simple formula putting ex, uh, exercise. Uh, so it, it we substitute the in, in, our, in the equation, we get the KC is S into pi into AF to the power half into 1.12. We solve for AF from this and uh, what we get is 25.4 millimeter. I hope uh, you all will also get the same result. And just check uh, from your end once. And similarly, to find the number of cycles to failure, we uh, have substituted all the relevant values here. So the A value that we have found here goes goes to the second part of this equation, and rest are all all were known to you. So if you calculate, if you complete the mathematics, I'm not going to the details. You will come up with the uh, number of cycles to failure will be seven nine one six cycles. Just check from your end if you're getting the same results. That's fine. Then we'll move ahead. Okay, so now the next part of the problem, which is uh, the MATLAB coding part. So similar to the previous problem, we have six cases here of the loading. The loading has been changed. So we solved the case for 180 Newton already, but we will now see how what happens if we change the load from 150 to 200 gradually. I'll shift to uh, MATLAB here. And 
we have i have already written a small code for this uh, as before so our uh, alpha for the semi infinite plate was 1.12 ai uh, initial fractal was given uh, 0.4 uh, stress intensity factor was 1800 your c and n as we have already derived are 30 and e to the power minus 15 and n equal to 4 the applied stress is uh, what is the variable here so we will type of the six cases and we have two equations which we have solved already we have written in the code form uh, this is again the uh, uh, vector division and the vector power power and multiplication we have used this functions once again as i have explained in the previous problem and then using these two expressions for af and n we can get the results and you know, let's now try to run this problem and see what the results are coming so yeah it is giving me correct results as in your 180 newton per millimeter square case is giving me 7916 cycles and your track length also 25.4 millimeter which we have already found so if you see this that now, if we have a gradually increasing stress load, we see that our crack length, a uh, failure length decreases, which means that the, the higher you load the uh, specimen with, it will, so uh, the cyclic loading amplitude is what is important here. The, uh, when more the amplitude is, the, uh, the smaller crack length it fails, and obviously it requires much lesser cycle. So heavier the loading, quicker it fails at a small crack, crack length. So that was it. That was it from the two problems that we, we see from here. Okay.